the biggest highlight, the biggest talking point coming out of this week's AW has to be the main event section with the, the 10 lashes. Now, of course, MJF set these stipulations where he couldn't touch MJ. Cody couldn't touch MJF before their uh, advertised match at Revolution, which is taking place on the 29th of Feb. Um, Cody also had to have a steel cage match with Wardlow, which happens in a few weeks' time. Um, I think that's possibly a week or two weeks before the pay-per-view. And then, of course, the other stipulation, the big stipulation, the one we're going to be talking about now is that Cody had to take 10 lashes uh, from MJF. And he had to... Cody has to abide by these stipulations in order to be able to finally get his hands on MJF and get the match at Revolution. But (laughs) all of... AW Dynamite this week was kind of building towards this main event segment, these 10 lashes. Um, I, I've got to say, you know, Cody's entrance was fantastic. I, I always love Cody's entrance. He kind of, he, he's a real megastar. And I think he's possibly the biggest baby face on the company. Um, we get a collection of kind of like baby faces and, and he was on the stage, but baby faces coming out to kind of support Cody uh, throughout the 10 lashes. Um, Cody, MJF, was was amazing in this segment. He kind of even took a couple of run-ups to deliver some of the lashes to Cody's back. And every single one, I think the first couple Cody took like a man, the, the next few, he was down on his hands and knees. You could tell that he was in pain. You could tell that he was struggling. But he, he'd be stood up after each one, uh, no matter how hard he was being hit. You had Dustin come out to support him. Dustin, I think, even jumped in the ring, um, offering to take the final few lashes for his brother. But Cody tell him no. It's mine. I'm going to take them. And Brandy came down. I think Wardlow took the ninth, second to last, uh, the, the ninth uh, lash. Uh, well, he kind of delivered the ninth lash. And then um, uh, MJF delivered the final one across the, across the chest. He did look like it was quite high, possibly closer to the neck region. But it was described as being across the chest of, of Cody before getting out of Dodge and tailing through the crowd. Um, they were being chased down by some wrestlers. I think even a fan got involved, and I think he got beat down by NGF and Wardlow <laughs> at the, kind of the top of the steps. But this was a really, really amazing segment, Max. I'm sure you'll agree. It was something that we, we kind of haven't really seen, not, not not something we're used to in the wrestling business. You could probably hark back to maybe the extreme era of ECW when they would do canings and things like this. Uh, but you're talking 20, 25 years ago since we've seen anything remotely similar on, on a mainstream wrestling pro- uh, product anyway. You've possibly got your hardcore groups or your indie groups that might have done something similar that I'm not aware of. But when you've got Cody on the screen, it's always gold. When you've got MJF on the screen, it's always gold. These two have built this feud to a, a pinnacle now where you just can't wait for the two of them to meet. And you've still got the steel cage match between Cody and Wardlow um, to, to go in a couple of weeks' time. But give us your kind of perspective on what happened in this main event section of this week's AEW Dynamite. The 10 lashes. Um, I thought all the participants in this knocked it out of the park. And I thought it was... Well, one of the best segments on a wrestling show I've seen in a long, long time. But give us your thoughts and feelings on this one then, Mags. Yeah, I wholeheartedly agree. It was by far the best segment of of the week in wrestling for me. Um, again, it, it's just the, what, what gets me with AEW is the nuances. It's not so much like the bigger picture. It's the, those little details. Uh, if you uh, recall a while ago, Cordy did a promo where uh, he was saying about when he reached out for people who, who he'd helped, there was nobody there. They were all a little bit preoccupied. And now come back to this this show and everybody wanted to to take those shots for him everybody wanted to be like there to help him and it's those kind of like little moments that that made this so much better of a of a of or, an already amazing segment and then i like the um the, the kind of like character change of ngf during during the segment he was having fun at the beginning he was really like enjoying uh, giving it to Cody and, and uh, telling guys like Arn Anton that they weren't they weren't allowed to get involved that they couldn't help. But when it got to the the last few, you could see he was getting frustrated that he couldn't break Cody down, mm-hmm. and there was more kind of uh, venom in his shots 
when uh, especially the last uh, last two or three, the one that that caught the back of Cordy's neck was at, looked absolutely brutal. And the pictures I've seen of it afterwards, it looked like it was getting redder and redder as time went on. Uh, yeah. yeah, I thought the segment was played to perfection. We had the books obviously coming down to try and help. We had Dustin, like you said, came and, and wanted to to take those uh, shots for him. Um, I think this kind of cemented Cordy's position as not only the the the, the best baby face in AEW, I think arguably the best baby face in wrestling today. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've still got three weeks until the Revolution pay-per-view, and I'm sure the storyline is going to build, and we've still got the cage match in a couple of weeks' time between Cody and Wardlow, and you're going to see these two interact every week, I think, up until the pay-per-view, kind of mm-hmm. getting us more and more hyped for that match. One thought that's kind of crossed my mind, have they peaked too soon, do you think? Do you think they should have left this this lash in until closer to the pay-per-view, maybe the week before the pay-per-view? Should they have started these stipulations with the cage match? Have they possibly peaked too soon? And how can they top it in the next three weeks before Revolution then, Max? Mm, possibly. You may, you may be right with that. Uh, there is uh, uh, quite a gap. But in saying that, I thought that they they kind of did the 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 MGF turn a little bit too soon, and and I've been proven wrong with that. I think they've uh, they've worked this storyline really well, so I'm quietly confident that they've got more tricks in in the bag. I don't think they would have uh, would have uh, basically shot the Lord so early, and then yeah. kind of let the fans almost like cool down. I think the 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 cage match is going to bring something unexpected. Uh, how we're going to get keep that fever pitch up, I don't know. Maybe uh, involving um, Dustin or the Bucks or, or even Brandy who came down to try and help. Maybe we could get some kind of like, um, matches or stories involving them or uh, or even angles or vignettes, something like that. Uh, but I'm I'm positive that they'll they'll keep this going. This is their their biggest match of of revolution uh yeah. so I, I i can't see can't see him failing on this to be honest it's just it's too good of a storyline for them to for, for him to let this cool down yeah yeah and, and i love the the chemistry that that um mjf has with cody and i, I like his kind of chemistry he has with uh, wardlow as well i think wardlow mm-hmm. makes a great henchman he's he's kind of a bit of a silent assassin gets involved when he needs to um and uh, we've not seen him in a match yet so i think the steel cage match will possibly be his debut on AEW. unless i'm mistaken i don't think i've seen him without his suit off to be honest with you but uh, that will be quite good and i know the individuals involved they're going to make sure that this doesn't fail and that they, they haven't peaked this past Wednesday and they're going to keep delivering and giving us more and more and more. Um, so it makes you think that if this is what they're giving us three weeks out from the pay-per-view, four weeks out from the pay-per-view, what are they going to give us in the next two weeks um, before Red Revolution itself? So it's quite exciting. And that that in itself is enough to get people kind of excited and, and kind of wanting to tune in every Wednesday as well to think, what well, how can they top it? What are they going to do to top it? And uh, I'm sure they will, because I think when they have a when they hit upon a storyline like this, like they did when in the build up to Jericho versus Cody, I thought that that run um, of, of weeks leading up to their match at um, was it all out or what was uh, it might have been. Um, their pay-per-view they had in October or November but uh, the, the Jericho versus Cody match was fantastic but the build up to that made you want to see that match and made you want to see that pay-per-view they sold it and I think they're delivering on this one as well so I'm intrigued I'll be tuning in Wednesday to see what Cody and MJF have in store and what what's uh, to be said um, but uh, maybe the reason they didn't have the 10 lashes so close to the pay-per-view is possibly because of the physical effects it would have had on Cody I'm sure he's going to be sore for a week uh, following that so yeah. uh yeah, but uh, he's going to be even more angry and even more determined when they do finally touch. Um, you know, I, I think what they're doing here is that they're selling us on the fact that we can't wait to see Cody kick MJF's ass. And yeah, uh, when that true. happens, I think, you know, you've got the biggest baby face and you've got the biggest heel um, on, on that brand. And uh, they're going to be going at it. And like you said, it is possibly the, the biggest match on the pay-per-view. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I can't wait. Um, other highlights uh, from this week's AEW Dynamite. You had a big eight-man tag match uh, featuring the Young Bucks, Kenny Omega and Hank 
Hangman Adam Page. Of course, Page and Omega are the current uh, AW Tag Team Champions going up against the Butcher, the Blade, um, and the Candlestick Maker. No, the Butcher, the Blade, <laughs> and the, the Lucha Brothers, of course. Um, and this was, you know, it was the heel combo that came out of the victors in this after the, the Lucha Brothers hit their pen to driver and double foot stomp for the eventual win. However, the, the big story coming out of this one is about Adam Page again appearing to, you know, refuse to tag to tag in the but the books during the match, despite having, uh, you know, a damaged uh, damaged wheel, a damaged left knee, almost certainly leading to the eventual loss for the Bucks, um, because he, he kind of wouldn't tag out, uh, you know, for, for the face team. Um, but we see, you know, Page literally drowning his sorrows with a, with a brewski, with a, with a lager uh, on the outside with the fans as the Bucks and Omega kind of look on in disappointment, really, as, as Page then kind of disappeared through the crowd with a, with a brewski in hand. So that's kind of the biggest storyline coming out of all of this. And I think that's um, leading to a tag team championship match next Wednesday because SCU won a, a number one contenders match uh, against Best Friends. So it'll be SCU looking to regain their championships um, against Omega and Page next Wednesday. But give us your thoughts on kind of what went down here and the storyline they're trying to portray with Adam Page. Um, once again, similar to the, the, the MJF and Cody storyline, I think they're playing this very well. It's, kind of subtle maybe not so subtle with the drinking angle uh, but I think all parties are kind of you know, playing their part very well in this angle but to give us your take on, on what we saw on Wednesday and kind of the bigger picture yeah um, I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm usually a big fan of uh, kind of um, addiction storylines uh, we've had it obviously with uh, with uh, Scott Hall when he was uh, when he was really really ill with uh, fighting his demons, so it, it's never something that kind of like I get excited about. But I think they're playing this one really really well. Uh, for my money, they need to keep Adam Page the face in this. They don't. They they need to keep him as as the 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 guy who's who's kind of like suffering because of his drinking. But it's it's. You, you need to feel sympathetic to him rather than like kind of like cast him aside. I think, and we've all known that the books have have always played well as heels. Uh, they they spent a majority of their their indie career as like these cocky smarmy heels. So um, yeah, I think I think this storyline it, it it needs to be treated with uh, kid gloves. I think um, it it can it can easily go over the point of of it being kind of disrespectful to people who are suffering through addiction uh but yeah i'm i'm again I'm, it's one of those storylines where i'm i'm quite confident that the guys know what they're doing and yeah. they know how know how far to take it um i i, I kind of don't like the fact that the the tag titles are being used in in almost like a as a like an afterthought yeah. uh, just to keep um to keep Omega and, and Page together, uh, it kind of meant no sense to put the belts on them because it doesn't. That this storyline doesn't really need those belts. To be fair, uh, they they were already an established group uh, before even AEW started, so we could it could have easily been played off about about uh, Page kind of coming away from this uh, this group or feeling a bit kind of frustrated with his position in the group, and and a, then we could have seen like the last of the, the Lucha Brothers or Best Friends still challenging for those titles so it kind of holds the, the tag titles in limbo maybe we'll get that kind of um, taken out of the picture if we get the SCU picking up the titles uh, in, in the in the upcoming match um, yeah. which which then would kind of make sense because it, if, if Paige is the reason why they lose the match because he's, uh, he's inebriated or, or the drink has kind of affected him it, it makes a, a good use of those tag tiles, I suppose. But yeah, it's a it's a very very touchy subject, uh, and it's one that they, so far they've been playing really really well. But it's one of those where you're always on the precipice of it going like down a bit of a darker route, and I don't really think that they should they should go that way. 
Yeah, and there was also a, a little bit of comedy involved. I think it was a backstage segment where um, I think it was members of the elite were kind of lambasting uh, Adam Page for yeah. not tagging out. And, uh, you know, uh, they said, I, I, we think we can see what the problem is and kind of took the beer away from his hand. And then as, as, as they disappeared off scene, you, you kind of saw maybe a little bit of remorse <laughs> on, on Page's face. And then from out of nowhere, he lifts up a pitcher filled with uh, <laughs> filled with beer, filled with lager, just carries on drinking. So, uh, that, you know, from, uh, it was from, about uh, five litres as well. <laughs> yeah, from a dark subject, I uh, kind of got a little bit of a chuckle out of that, to be honest with you. But uh, there's yeah. one of two ways that this could go, in my opinion. You, you're quite right. SEU could regain the, the, the tag team championships next Wednesday. I My gut instinct is telling me that that's possibly a bit too soon for SC, SEU to regain the gold, to be honest with you. Um, I think they're going to kind of drag this out a little bit, possibly to a matchup revolution. And I wouldn't be surprised if it ends with maybe the Bucks uh, contending for the tag team titles against Omega and Page. I think that that would be kind of the more logical route for uh, you know, the tag team titles to go you know, down that road to have the elite in one match, the Bucks on one side of the, the ring against Omega and Page, the champions on the other side. And I, I think the Bucks... I think they're deserving to be the next AEW Tag Team Champions. Um, but I think that, um, yeah, I've, I'd like to see that match. Yeah, I, I, I'm, more, I'm, more, I'm more interested to see kind of where it goes with Adam Page, though. Is he going to turn full-blown heel? Is the is the alcohol going to kind of um, in, impact him in, in one of their matches, leading to a loss of the titles, possibly? Um, you know, is it going to eventually lead to a, a, a big full blown feud between Omega and Adam Page? There's many ways this can go, both with the, the tag title picture and kind of with a singles feud, and all, all the pieces of the puzzle kind of aren't quite in place yet. But I think that's part of the fascination of the storyline is you don't quite know where it's going to go, and uh, there's many ways it could go. Um, but so uh, yeah, I'm in intrigued to see where this one goes this is another one that's kind of getting me thinking about uh, another you know possible uh, big match at revolution like i say possibly the young bucks versus omega and page for the tag team titles i think if they're going to have a championship match a tag title championship match at revolution i think that's the match it needs to be but uh, you've just said yourself you'd love to see that match um any kind of um, thoughts on my fantasy booking scenario there max yeah, I, I like it, I, and I, I think you hit the nail on the head with the fact that it's the path is not like directly determined. There's many different kind of routes that this could go down. Uh, I would love for it to lead to a, a books versus a Hangman and, and uh, Omega match, and again that then leading to. Um, uh, Omega versus Page match. Yeah, I think uh, some really, really interesting booking, and and that's again, it's it's one of the good things that that about AEW is how they're keeping the fans engaged and interested because you just you you can kind of you can kind of guess what's going on, but you you just don't quite know where where the stories are going. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then, kind of, the final highlight I'm gonna we're gonna talk about now from AW was actually what kicked it all off this week, and it was uh, uh, John Moxley coming out. He had a match with Ortiz from mm -hmm. uh, from. Uh, I don't know if they call themselves uh, Pride and Powerful anymore or um, just Santana and Ortiz, as far as I'm concerned. It's a shame <laughs> they can't use the LAX moniker, but uh, there we go. They're part of the inner circle. But John Moxley. What I really loved uh, to kick things off was uh, Justin Roberts's uh, ring announcement of, <laughs> of John Moxley. I think that's got to be the best uh, uh, ring announcement in, in wrestling at the moment. And he really kind of accentuates the, 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 the John, like he yeah. did when he used to introduce John Cena. But it's even more fire behind it now. I absolutely I, love uh, Justin I, Roberts for that call. I think I think they've even got a T-shirt out with it, with uh, him saying, like, <laughs> G.R. Moxley. Yeah, that's What's going it. on? Yeah, no, but... Uh, I'll have to hunt that one down. That, that, that would be a cool T-shirt. But uh, yeah, I mean, it was a fun match. Uh, Moxie getting the win via the, the paradigm shift, getting the one, two, three. And then the storyline going out of this, of course, uh, John Moxley refused to be part of the inner circle, kind of uh, accepted and then and then kind of double-crossed uh, Chris Jericho in the inner circle a few weeks back on AEW Dynamite, of course. And uh, I think just before the Jericho cruise, I think on the Dynamite the Wednesday before, didn't Jericho 
get one of the spikes off of his jacket and kind of uh, claw away at, at one of Moxley's eyes. And uh, he's been he's been selling that eye injury, selling that eye patch like a like a like a pro. He's he's really <laughs> you know kayfabe is not dead to John Moxley and kind of wear it out in the streets and the Jericho Cruz uh, any sort of photograph you see of him on uh, social media, he's, he's really rocking that eye patch. And that could be a long term gimmick, you never know. Uh, but this week he kind of got a bit of payback, a bit of retribution, and uh, Santana. Um, Ortiz's tag team partner, of course, uh, kept getting uh, involved in the match mags and uh, uh, we, we tried to get involved towards the end, but got bundled off the ring apron. And then when he came in the ring after the match, I think uh, Moxley got a, his key uh, to that uh, very expensive, I think, £750,000 car that he kind of uh, got from uh, from the inner circle. And he kind of jabbed away and kind of uh, tried to kind of blind Santana um, in the same way that Moxley was blinded a few weeks earlier by by Jericho. So I think obviously you've got Jericho Moxley to look forward to at Revolution on the 29th of February. And the story kind of leading up to that pay-per-view match is going to be how it appears John Moxley is going to be going through the inner circle one by one. And uh, this week it was Ortiz. Next week he's actually got a match with Santana. So that'll be a good match. Um, but give us your thoughts on what went down here, the story they're trying to tell and um, and that eye patch that John Moxley is rocking uh, <laughs> like, like an absolute demon. He really is. I love the eye patch. I think it makes <laughs> him look like a big boss from um, from Metal Gear Solid. Oh yeah, <laughs> but yeah, again, it's a, a it's a good way of keeping this this storyline uh, with uh, with Jericho and Moxley kind of fresh. Um, it, we've known that this is going to be the matchup for for uh, for the paper for for a long, long time, and. Again, it's kind of like the the Corda and MGF. You've got to kind of up the up the amp amp to to make sure it doesn't cool off. And this is a perfect way to do it. Having uh, having like a, a posse of guys like uh, the Inner Circle, uh, it, it allows for for you kind of almost like you you're facing mini boss after mini boss until you get to the the big boss, which is uh which is Chris Jericho. I'm I'm interested to see what uh what um. Is meant by an eye for an eye match. Uh, obviously, both of them mm. are now have eye injuries. Uh, maybe it could lead to like, a blindfold match. I have no idea. But yeah, it's, uh, yeah. I'm I'm really enjoying uh, Moxley in AEW, and I'm really enjoying Chris Jericho in AEW. I think they've both uh, had a real breath of fresh air breathed into their their wrestling careers from this company, and totally it's it's, yeah. it's it's absolutely great to see. Mm, yeah, totally. And uh, I know you're a big fan of, of Jericho. You're probably rocking Le Champion t-shirts as we mm. speak. Uh, but, I've uh... actually got, for my <laughs> birthday, I got an Undisputed Era t-shirt, so I'm oh. trading on AEW. <laughs> no, no, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. But uh, but there we go. So, yeah, uh, that, that opened the show. But that's how we're going to kind of close our uh, our little summary of, of AEW. Well, kind of, anyway. I mean, we've got quite a few matches to look forward to over the next few weeks with Dynamite. I mean, uh, during this week's Dynamite, it was confirmed that Kenny Omega will be going uh, in a 30-minute Ironman match with Pac. Uh, those two have had a bit of a rivalry over the last few months. Um, and that's going to be taking place in a few weeks' time. I think uh, possibly on the go-home show to Revolution, if I'm not mistaken but uh, possibly leading into our discussion regarding adam page and you know could there be some shenanigans there with with uh, members of the elite or possibly page getting involved in that one but that's gonna be a really good 30 minute iron man match pack versus kenny omega um there's also been announced for next week uh, a, a women's title match. Ryu, the current women's champion, going up against Nyla Rose. I'm a big fan of Nyla Rose. And uh, th there's also going to be Adam Page versus Kenny Omega versus uh, Adam Page and Kenny Omega, um, of course, going up against SCU. We mentioned that SCU are the new number one contenders looking to regain their gold. Um, and then, of course, um, we mentioned it earlier the steel cage match between Wardlow and Cody happening in a couple of weeks' time. Um, so, some big matches that they're kind of putting out there getting us all salivating and looking forward to up and coming episodes of Dynamite so plenty to look forward to there some really big matches um, any, any kind of standout matches there I'm guessing possibly the Iron Man match you're looking forward to but, uh, um, but the, the schedule of matches for the next few weeks on Dynamite is looking pretty good already yeah uh, absolutely and uh, the one that uh, is I'm looking forward to probably the most is the Nala Rose versus Rio one I think uh 
obviously uh, Rio was the right person at the time to to put the belt on uh, to really showcase that kind of Joshy style of wrestling. But she's a, she obviously works for another company as well, and I think now the Rose has slowly kind of built this monster uh, persona that that we all expected her to have from the very beginning. I think now it would be a right time to to kind of put that belt on her and and have her going against some of more of the the face uh, wrestlers that that are in the company. Uh, one thing uh, I I was really really impressed with, and I, I, you didn't really touch on it, was uh was the the continuation of the Brit Baker turning heel uh, with the way that she's like pulling teeth out of people's mouths and mm. just she was obviously going to be the face of the company uh, and it kind of didn't work and I, again this is um, I've got to give props to AEW they've they've they've, uh, they've seen that it wasn't kind of working and they've totally flipped the switch but but done it in such a way that it's looked natural. And I really, really do. I've enjoyed it, and I think it kind of covers some of Brit's um, like greenness in the ring. Almost the fact that she can now, instead of like being technical, she can be brutal. And I think uh, it was a great way of showcasing that where she was ripping people's teeth out and 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 getting the victory like that. So yeah, uh, a lot to 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 keep you invested in in AEW. A lot to keep you coming back every week, and that's exactly what you want from a wrestling show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally agree. So another cracking episode of AW Dynamite. 